Hello from Joshua Tree. Um, doing a two-day hike, spending the night overnight tonight. It's supposed to get kind of cold tonight. They said down to 29. Um, I'm going to be maybe 800 feet higher than where that forecast was given, so it'll be chilly. I debated on bringing my tent. Glad I did. But um, anyway, I'm doing a loop. Uh, this is Water Canyon, um, just at the beginning of it. So back behind me there, that's where you see it. Um, there's some Joshua trees back here. You don't really see a lot of them. Uh, there's a lot in the flatter areas. They're beautiful. Um, but anyway, the goal is to get up to the top today and uh, camp up there. I'm, uh, I'm in the middle of Smithwater Canyon, maybe, I don't know, maybe a third of the way up if I'm lucky. Um, this place is not easy to hike through. <laughs> um, I have plenty of time. There's huge, huge boulders there that um, it's just hard to get around, but pretty fun. The wind's blowing. It's been blowing in my face all day. Um, it's better now in the canyon, but it's still... It's pretty brutal at times. Anyway, making progress, but it's slow. It should be an interesting hike. Um, I just came up that area down there and uh, heading up this area here uh, down there I kind of wish I would have taken a video but I was in a hurry to get out of there a really cool uh, two great big rocks that were kind of cropped in together and uh, you could tell people had built it up a little bit to be a shelter area uh, but there were cat turds and bones it was a cat den. So I got the hell out of there. Alright, shit just got serious because I had to get the paracord out. Um, this is a kind of waterfall area and it's pretty steep and pretty slick. There's a little water running through it too. Um, some of the first water I've seen out here. Um, and then it goes down from there. Um, yeah, I tried to get up it a little ways but I slipped and luckily I didn't have my backpack. On the water, but anyway, I got the par paracord out, so I'm gonna try to climb up myself and then tug my back back up. That's scary. I had to climb on a rock ledge that I didn't like very much, but I didn't want to go back to the mountain line, didn't either. This place is awesome. Um, but it's a real deal. I need to get out of this canyon. All right, well, I'm about out of the canyon. It's four o'clock, I think the sun sets around five out here, so I've got daylight left, which is good. That rock was scary. That's, that's the first time I've been scared in a long time. But I'm okay, so I just didn't want to turn back and go towards that mountain line. I knew that waterfall was there from research I did, and I knew people said it was a little sketchy. I've heard things before like that that have been overblown almost every time, but this time it was certainly something I can win by themselves. 
I think with two people wouldn't be bad, but by yourself it wasn't good. So, <laughs> and I lost a water bottle, but it was a small one. So, and I'm not going back to get it. But tomorrow should have, I don't know, 13 miles of hiking all in a desert, but no canyons. So that's good. Um, yeah, that'd be better. It's easy to move when it's flat. I got plenty of water. It got really cold out. I'm trying to eat more. So it can stay warm, but oh my god. And if anything can go wrong, it goes wrong. Like my sleeping bag can't zip all the way. And gets drafty, and I think I brought just enough clothes, but could have been a, a lot worse. But I went through my emergency pack, and I've been emptying out stuff that I've had for over ten years, and. I got the, the tin foil blanket here. It's awesome. And it actually has helped. And then I forgot that I put these in here. But look. Hand warmers. Ah! I'm so excited about this. I can't believe it. It's ridiculous how excited I am to use these hand warmers. I never use this stuff, ever. But I'm using it tonight. And thank God I have it in my stuff. All right. Oh, by the way, it's 7 o'clock at night. It might be a long night. Well, we'll find out. Okay, so that was a cold night. That might be one of the colder nights backpacking I think I've ever had um, I got my emergency blanket out my sleeping bag didn't work right I had all my clothes on double socks double gloves um, I need a new sleeping bag that's for sure um, these tin blankets whatever they work pretty good but there's definitely um, there's definitely ice in my bladder that I left right outside the tent. <clears throat> I didn't want to leave it inside the tent just in case it would leak. I know they're pretty sturdy, but it didn't freeze all the way through, but there's definitely ice. Um, <coughs> but I made it. Sun's starting to come up. Um, starting to warm up a little bit. So, sun's out, gun's out. Um, try to warm up a little bit and drink some instant coffee and get on the road. I think, I, I think I'm think i going to cut it close and hike back to the road and hitchhike. That'll be nine miles instead of the, I think, 14 or so that I figured it would be. Um, I've hiked plenty. <laughs> so, I might just camp at a campsite tonight and do a day trip later on or something like that so anyway need a new sleeping bag yeah this place is things change quickly in Joshua Tree the wind sucked but anyway it'll be fun so I thought I'd fill you in on where my route is, where I've been going. So I started out at the Boy Scout Trailhead, went through the Quail Springs picnic area, took that all the way west here. It was pretty flat, desert, a lot of Joshua trees. But then I went up that Smithwater Canyon. So that's a canyon where I saw the mountain lion den had the shady waterfall. And the original plan was to follow this California Riding and Hiking Trail, which from here it should go downhill and then kind of flatten out, maybe uphill a little bit, but then 
and then take this Johnny connection trail back up and over to Boy Scout. <clears throat> but when I planned the trip, I knew that if I had trouble or just wasn't feeling it, I can take this down and at this connection instead I just go east. What is that? One and a half miles to Juniper Flats trailhead. And there's a road, there's a paved road that goes through there. Oh, there's some of my blood. <laughs> um, but this road goes back and forth, and there's a lot of traffic on that, or I would assume that there should be some. So I'm probably going to take that and hitchhike, unless I'm feeling really good by the time I get to here. Um, <clears throat> so it's good to have a plan B, and that was kind of built in just in case. So it'll be nine miles instead of 14. Well, I'm back on the road. Uh, it's about quarter after eight. Got everything cleaned up and packed away and used a lot of my water and my food so my pack's a lot lighter and I was able to pack the tent and everything inside the pack and sit outside so it's not as heavy. And uh, should be just trails from now on. So, beautiful morning. I still haven't seen anybody since I got off the road. So, about 10 miles all alone. Probably another 10 miles to go. But I see foot footprints on this track. So, probably run into people today maybe. Really cool. I just got to the part where I'm gonna start going downhill. And uh, I think this trail goes around here. And I think it goes down in that valley and then up the other valley and then um, to the north. So it's real pretty. Super cool. You can even see snow capped mountains back there video will give you an idea of how vast this place can be. I'm kind of up on a hill. See this pretty big canyon down there. Or big valley anyway. But all of that out there is part of the park. I think there's some trails in there but not sure. But that's a lot of space. And I doubt there's anybody in there, or there might be, but not many. But I'm making good time, and trail's pretty clear. All right, almost done climbing for the day. Um, I came. I believe I came over that ridge up there and then it came down and then back up um, not a huge climb probably 500 feet or so but still push you and you can see a couple snow capped mountains there and the valley all the way through here um, but I'm close to the top of the ridge and it's supposed to be flat from here out I've gone about four and a half miles so if I take my plan B then I'm about halfway there if I hike all the way back I'm about a third so I'm in good shape all right finally got to top of the ridge I'm on the other side uh, looking to go east back to where I came from um, so it's gonna be pretty flat from here on out um, basically following the trail here and then Gonna go in between where I am and these mountains here and then just keep shooting that way. Um, I got about five miles to go if I go back to the road, which I'm kind of thinking that way. I just ran out of water in my camel back. I still have about two and a half liters in my bag, so I'm, I'm fine. Um, but by the time I go five more miles, I'm probably not gonna wanna do five more. Could, but probably not wise, so. Heading out. This area is really cool. There's a lot of 
a lot of neat Joshua trees right around here. Like just as you walk through, there's a whole bunch of them. They're just really awesome. Okay, I kicked up a jackrabbit. There he is. Well, we finally got to the place where you might be able to see a little bit of glimmer of traffic there. Um, that's the road that I'm heading to. I think I'm still probably two miles away maybe, um, but I'm going to call it a day. Running a little low on water, not bad. I still have two liters, but um, an extra five miles on top of that wouldn't be fun. So I'm going to drink and be happy and get a hotel room, hopefully with a hot tub. Well, here we are at the crossroads. This is where my original plan was gonna take me. Well, it looks like the trail goes up there. It doesn't even say it on the sign, and that concerns me a little bit. The trail's on the map, but I know it goes uphill, and I'm starting to get hot spots on my feet. So I know I can go a mile and a half downhill right now and get back to civilization and hopefully hitch a ride um, so pretty awesome trip but uh, yeah this Joshua Tree desert area is just a really tough place um, actually I should be showing you all oh, crap maybe I can join that but all of this stuff out here I mean it's just it's awesome it's beautiful look at all those trees out there I mean it's just they're pretty awesome um, but yeah it's time to call it a day <laughs> I'm back to the parking lot um, there's traffic here it's good I'll have to ride with somebody, so fun couple days. I think I want to write about it. I've walked almost a mile trying to thumb and nobody really gave me any good news. So I'm here in kind of one of the picnic areas and there's a pull off. I'm not gonna bother people if they're not gonna be friendly enough to give somebody a ride, but Anyway, so I got four miles to hike. We'll see if somebody picks me up, but otherwise I got more more road to hit. I think it should be coming up here to the car. <laughs> Feels so good to put on regular shoes. Um, I'm glad I did plan B. I was starting to give up on humanity when uh, nobody would pull over and then I found this group of girls that were pulled over taking pictures and they asked if I needed a ride and I said yes and so they gave me a ride up here 
but they were French, not Californian. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm glad I found some nice people and I left them 10 bucks in their car seat. So, anyway, I'm back. What a cool place.